What's going on everyone? This is William and I am going to attempt to make a tutorial for you guys to show you how to install a hybrid turbo kit into your RS3. So I have a 2019 RS3. It's currently stage 2 hardware on a Unitronic stage 2 ethanol tune. And I absolutely love it. It totally changed the car completely. I could never imagine going back to stock. It's fast, it's fun, it's loud, it's everything I wanted it to be. But you know, like uh, most of you, I'm sure you understand, it's just not enough on the top end. So I really want to take it to the next level. And uh, it's not, unfortunately, in the budget to build the motor now. So I went with what has been told to me to be the perfect turbo for a stock block motor. And that is the 710 hybrid. And uh, if for those of you who don't know, a hybrid turbo is essentially the same size as a stock turbo. It goes in the stock location only it has been machined out on the inside to fit bigger turbine compressor and make more power so um, they're awesome this is a dual ball bearing IMS 710 I don't have it in front of me right now it'll be here tomorrow so tonight I'm gonna take out the stock turbo get everything out and get it ready so tomorrow we can put in the 710 and I'm super excited about it. I took advantage of Black Friday. And so thank you to Hank and also thank you to Unitronic and the Unitronic community who has helped me basically on every step of this build. Um, you know, I'm not a mechanic, so keep that in mind when I'm doing this. There may be a better way to do it, but I couldn't find any videos. So I wanted to make a video, so hopefully it can help out somebody. But definitely check the comment section because someone else in the community might hop in and say hey you know what there's a better way to do something and, uh, and if that's you I totally welcome that uh, I appreciate that I'm sure other people will appreciate it so uh, with that I'm gonna get started and I'm gonna get started from the top of the car and you can see here I have uh, the engine cover off I have my integrated engineering um, intake and this super ugly coupler which I am gonna be changing out for a black one tonight which I'm pretty happy about because that thing is an eyesore but um anyway so i'm going to start by taking out this uh intake tube um and i'm going to take off the coupler and heat shield that i have here and now when you install the turbo inlet um they tell you to take the pcv valve completely off i don't think we'll have to do that for the uh hybrid install um i'm not sure yet but We'll get to that when I get to it, but for now I'm going to take off all this and um, undo the PCV valve and just pull it out of the turbo inlet. What's going on guys? So you can see here I've removed the intake completely. You don't have to do that. I removed mine so that I can install this DSG catch can, which was super easy to install. Um, but all you need to worry about is taking out the intake tube here. And you can see I went ahead and taped off the turbo inlet just in case I don't want anything to fall down in there um, and I figured out I don't really have to remove the entire PCV valve so all I did was take off this first spark plug um, connector here and then got the 10 millimeter bolt that's on the turbo inlet and pulled the PCV loose out of there and just kind of pushed it to the side and so now the only thing left to do for now up here is to remove this heat shield I don't know if it's necessary, but it definitely makes reaching everything much easier. So I'm probably going to go ahead and remove that. And then there is one inlet bolt that we need to get from the top. If you're on a stock inlet, then you need a Torx. I think it's a 25 or a 30. And then if you're on a Unitronic 4 inch, then it's a normal uh, hex head bolt that they supplied with the inlet. And I have this for the hex head. And I also bought one of these for any of those hard to reach Torx bit. These are super low profile, very narrow for getting in those tight spots because you have a heat shield right there. So highly recommend to pick up um, one of these and also a set of crow's feet. So that will help you a lot getting into those very tight spots. All right, so before I take out that heat shield, I do want to see if I can reach everything from the bottom without taking that out because that heat shield is pretty annoying. Um, it's pretty hard to get out because the bolts are tucked way up underneath. So I'm going to try to avoid taking that off for now. Probably will need to take it out. But now that I've removed the top bolt from the Unitronic Turbo Inlet, what I'm going to do is 
put wheel chocks in the back and I'm going to jack the car up as high as I can get it and put it on jack stands and then tackle taking out the turbo inlet and the outlet pipe on the other side of the turbo. So um, what I recommend for doing that is to go ahead and take off your passenger wheel and then either take out some of the bolts on the wheel liner or take out the entire wheel liner because it's going to make getting to that outlet pipe and that bottom turbo inlet bolt much easier. That's a pretty annoying to have to do this again. I've already done it twice and it was pretty difficult both times, but hopefully this time it'll be easier. So I'm going to take this wheel off and take the liner off, jack it up, and then I'll take some more video. All right guys, so I got the car jacked up. I decided to go ahead and jack the back up so I have a little bit more room to work under here. And so I have removed the splash guard underneath and I've taken out the bolts um, all in the splash guard here. So there's several all around here. You don't need to take out these ones here, um, but this is all nice and loose. There's two on the bottom and that should be good enough to get to the outlet pipe and turbo inlet. Uh, it just helps to get your hands in there and really get to those bolts. So not necessary, but very helpful. And under the car here, we have one bolt right here on the um, turbo outlet pipe. It's a T25. And then you have the intercooler piping. I think that's like a six or seven millimeter hex head. So you just unscrew that, pop the intercooler piping off, then take out that single bolt right there on that outlet pipe and then up here you can see the uh, I believe it's a eight millimeter triple square I use a 10 millimeter Allen wrench to get it though because I don't have any triple squares and it works just fine it's not stripping I've taken it out twice now totally good and then I don't know if you can see it hopefully you can but there are two um, worm clamps on the top of the outlet pipe that you need to loosen. You probably only need to loosen the top one, but on some of the instructions for the turbo inlet, it suggests that you take them both off. But um, essentially, you really only need the top one. And if you haven't done a turbo inlet before, uh, you will find that that particular coupler might be melted onto the turbo. It, turbo uh, inlet or no it's onto the turbo sorry and um yeah that thing can be pretty hard to remove so once you get it all loose you're gonna have to kind of pry on it and pull on it to get it off just wanted to show you for those of you who are struggling with that triple square on the bottom of the outlet pipe this guy here um, I did use an eight millimeter Allen and you can see here I have a variety of straight and wobble sockets plus one of these couplers at the end and this is also on a wobble socket and this allows me to really get in those holes in there and get to that bolt very easily as you can see there's a ton of flex on this and this just makes the job a ton easier so I definitely recommend picking up some um, wobble extensions and this wobble, uh, I forget what it's called, but you get the point. Um, it makes getting that bolt out super easy. Okay, so I wanted to talk about the um, Unitronic 4 inch turbo inlet. I was advised to get some crow's feet, however, this extra lip on this one makes it, and it plus its depth makes it unable to fit around the bolt so if you do get crow's feet don't get the ones that are almost a box wrench um, but i wanted to show you the angle i'm using and what i'm using to get that bolt so i'm under here under the car and i have one of these guys and i got these in a pack for unfortunately 20 freaking dollars just for this one wrench um they're 20 bucks and they're super thin walled. You might be able to get a, excuse me, you might be able to get a, um, the box side around it. I was unable to, but you can see here, this thing is pulled away. So I can easily, oh, I just dropped my light, damn it. 
I can easily get up in here with this. And so I'm taking this little wrench here. I'm using the open end. And I am getting to it just like that. So um, pretty easy to move around here. I can't do it with just one hand. But you can see here I can easily reach that bolt um, using one of these small wrenches. So I hope that helps somebody because that bolt is a major pain in the ass. Alright guys, so after fighting with the inlet bolts quite a bit, um, I was only able to use this little tiny wrench. I'm pretty sure a stubby would serve a similar purpose um, and not cost so much because this is pretty ridiculous to pay 20 bucks for this little tiny thing but it worked really well and uh, I wanted to talk to those who are installing a turbo inlet for the first time if that's why you're watching this video um, you are going to have to remove some other things in order to do your turbo inlet for the first time I was able to remove the PCV valve because I have already cut the security bolt but if you're on a stock inlet you are going to have to remove one two possibly three of the spark plug covers here the coil pack um, harness and then you're going to have to take all of these bolts off and remove that cover then you're going to have to take off this connector here it just pulls back and then you squeeze it and pull it out it's kind of hard to get out um, and then after that this is all going to lift up and then you are going to need to unscrew the three torx bolts right here in this thing and uh, I've seen some people able to actually just remove that section of the PCV valve but mine would not come apart there's like a, a T coupler right here um, I'm not really sure how people got that part out, but um, it goes all the way around to here as well. And you can remove these three bolts and then that whole thing will come out. And once you get the PCV loose, you'll be able to pull the whole inlet out with the PCV still attached to it. And you can see here there's actually some oil inside of my inlet already. So I do have a catch can in the mail. I would recommend running one, obviously that oil is probably going to end up getting into the engine and causing some carbon buildup. So probably definitely going to want to get a um, catch can as well. But as you can see, I pulled that right out and uh, I didn't need to remove the PCV for just the hybrid. But if you're doing a turbo inlet install, you will have to take that out. So um, hopefully you can see all that, but it's, uh, it's pretty easy to get that out. And then once you do get the turbo inlet out, you're going to have to take a grinder or better yet a uh, Dremel and cut a groove in the bolt so you can stick a screwdriver in there and unscrew that security bolt. I actually had to um, take a mallet and tap on the top of the screwdriver to bust that bolt loose because it was in there very tight. Some people have no problem. I had a very hard time getting mine out. so. You can use heat or you can use some uh, tapping to get it loose and then it should screw right out. I did have to cut a pretty deep groove into it. Um, but once you screw that out, then when you install it back on, you'll use the supplied bolt that, you're, um, that came with your inlet so that you don't have to do that again. 